Einstein's on the top rope. What's he thinking? No way. Not from up there. He's airborne. Crossbody. Hawkins' oh terror word. just exploded. The hinge is gone. That's pure he relativity in motion. Get ready to have your minds blown because this week has been absolutely insane. We're talking a potential 15 times speed boost for AI video, Google's official clapback to Sora 2, and a humanoid robot that's literally ready to start punching the clock on the factory floor. And that's just the appetizer. We've also got a brand new open source model that's proving size definitely isn't everything, a super powerful video upscaler that just dropped its code for all you tinkerers out there, and the full scoop on Figure AI's new robot that's about to be mass produced by the thousands. The pace of AI is just not letting up. So buckle up and let's get you caught up on what really matters this week. Kicking things off with some industry tea, it looks like Google is spinning up the hype machine for VO 3.1. A bunch of third-party platforms that use Google's models, like Higgs Field, are already flashing coming soon notices and have wait lists open. If you've been around the block, you know this is a huge tell. It basically means a public release or at least a wider beta is about to drop, probably within the next week or so. Now, this move feels like a direct shot at the competition. Look, VO3 was a beast when it launched, no doubt. But let's be real, it got a little overshadowed by Sora 2 and Sora 2 Pro, which came in and just flaxed with their crazy understanding of complex prompts and, you know, actual physics. To stay in this fight, Google needs a heavy hitter, and it looks like VO3.1 is stepping into the ring. We've seen Google move fast before. Remember the Nano Banana model? So it's no surprise they're iterating this quickly. So what's the secret sauce for VO3.1? It all seems to come down to generation length and consistency. Right now, Sora 2 taps out at around 12 to 15 seconds. The rumor mill is buzzing that VO3.1 will be pushing past 30 seconds, with some whispers even pointing to a full 60-second capability, probably at a crisp 1080p. They're clearly focused on going long while keeping things looking sharp. It's a pretty safe bet that they're baking in the tech from their Nano Banana project. That whole project was about keeping characters consistent over longer videos, which is the massive hurdle you have to clear when you're trying to make a video longer than a few seconds with different scenes or camera cuts. VO3 already had gorgeous visuals, so if they can nail that long-form consistency, it would be a huge leap forward. Keep your eyes peeled for an official announcement in the next week to a month because you know Google wants to steal that spotlight back. All right, let's switch gears and talk about a scrappy little open source model called Kandinsky 5.0 Lite. This is a tiny 2 billion parameter model for video and images, and honestly, it's punching way above its weight class. Let's just jump into the examples because seeing is believing. First up, we've got an egg in a science lab. What's so cool here is the storytelling. You see this cloud of energy materialize, the egg forms from it, and then bam, it cracks open and a baby dragon pops out. The particle effects are on point, and that transition is super smooth, which is a tough thing for these models to nail. Check out this next one. A cloud literally flies into the shot and starts raining. Then a tree just sprouts from the ground with these insane red flowers. But what really sells it is the camera work. It's so smooth, it feels like a planned cinematic shot, not the jittery mess we sometimes see. It totally captures that vibe of magical, fast-forward growth. Next, a girl riding a flying dragon, the model is totally going for that epic movie feel. The camera is panning and tilting, showing off the landscape below, giving you a real sense of speed and height. Now let's look at the distill version, which is built for speed. Here's a girl in a field holding a jar with a fish in it. And yeah, right away you'll notice the fish is just floating in an empty jar. No water. So it definitely fumbled the physics there. But putting that aside, the visual quality is stunning. The camera work is slick smoothly racking focus from the fish to the girl's face. The whole aesthetic is just beautiful. Here's a dude on a motorcycle, ripping out of a jungle and driving straight into a portal. The portal effect itself is handled really well. The way it blends the jungle, the motorcycle, and that sci-fi portal into one shot is seriously impressive. And now for a classic AI torture test, a person talking. We've got a woman holding a coffee cup, and the generation is super clean. Her facial expressions and lip sync look natural, not all janky and distorted. Back to the cinematic stuff, check out this absolute unit of a ship flying through the clouds. The sense of scale is epic, and the camera follows it with this smooth arcing motion. The lighting is complex too, with the sun and the Milky Way in the sky, and the model just pulls it all together for a stunning shot. 
This next one shows off the model's world-building chops. It's this wild, alien landscape with a massive planet hanging in the sky. The whole scene is just beautifully composed with a really distinct vibe. It also does small-scale animation really well. Here's a little animated chicken walking around on someone's hand. The way its feet interact with the hand is pretty stable and believable. In this clip, we've got an animated character with her hair blowing in the wind. The star of the show here is the hair physics. It just flows and reacts to the wind in a way that looks totally natural. Animal animations are another win. This parrot chilling on a crocodile is just chef's kiss. The textures are incredible. You can see the detail in the feathers and the croc skin, and the parrot's little movements as it balances look so real. And one more animal shot because this is too good. A peacock just suddenly fans out its tail feathers. The motion is so fluid and captures that explosive, graceful movement. So how does this little beast actually work? To get a little nerdy for a second, it uses a latent diffusion pipeline with a diffusion transformer, or DIT at its core. It basically works in a compressed data space to be more efficient. To understand what you type, it uses two language models, QN 2.5 VL and CLIP to guide the generation. Then a component called the Hunyuan Video 3D VAE handles the encoding and decoding of video. And get this, in user studies, people actually preferred it. When put head to head with an older version of Sora, users picked Kandinsky for visual quality 62% of the time. Against a much bigger 14 billion parameter model, a whopping 73% of users liked Kandinsky's visuals more. It proves that in the eyes of the user, bigger isn't always better. The code and models are up on GitHub with a few different versions to play with, including two distill versions that are way faster. We're talking six times faster with basically the same quality. On a beefy NVIDIA H100, you can crank out a five second video in about 35 seconds, and it should even run on consumer GPUs with as little as six gigabytes of VRAM. There's already a comfy UI integration too. The team is already planning image to video and a future pro model. As always, links are down below, go check it out. Next, NVIDIA just dropped a bombshell called DC Video Gen. Now, this isn't a new AI model. Think of it more like a supercharger for the models that already exist. The name is a mouthful, Efficient Video Generation with Deep Compression Video Autoencoder. But all you need to know is that it promises to make video generation way faster and way more beautiful. Let's look at some examples of it working on its own first. Here's a time lapse of a flower blooming. It perfectly captures that delicate unfolding of the petals. The motion is silky smooth and the detail is consistent with none of that flickering or weird morphing you sometimes see. It looks like a real professional time lapse. Next, an image to video generation. The prompt was a cinematic video of text DC video gen formed by clouds. Not only does it nail the cloudy text, but it adds a slow cinematic camera pan and even throws the moon in the background to create a really polished shot. But this is where it gets crazy, the side-by-side -side comparisons. On the left, we've got a video from a 14 billion parameter model that took almost 27 minutes to generate. The prompt is a battle-scarred robot walks through a desolate city ruin. Now on the right is the same prompt from the same model, but with DC Video Gen doing its thing. This one was generated in just 3.67 minutes. The difference is just night and day. The version on the right is sharper, the robot's movements are cleaner, and the whole environment is just way more detailed. Let's do another one. Prompt. A trail runner sprints through a sun-dappled forest. The original on the left took about 28 minutes again. It's got this slow-mo, dreamy vibe, and the runner's a bit blurry. The version on the right took just over three minutes and looks way more realistic. The motion is dynamic, the lighting is crisp, and the runner's form is sharp and correct. And here's a quick one of a Jeep driving. Left is standard, right is with DC Video Gen. The clarity and stability are just on another level. The Jeep on the right feels more solid and the details in the background are so much clearer. Check out this eagle in flight. Both clips are in glorious slow-mo, which is perfect for a shot this majestic, but the generation on the right is just chef's kiss. The detail in the feathers is way sharper, the way the light plays off them is more complex, and the whole image is just so much cleaner all while being generated in a fraction of the time. The effect is just as crazy in animated content. For this prompt, the original 27-minute render on the left gives you a decent animation. It's fine, but the version on the right is so much more cinematic. The lighting has more depth, the character designs look crisper, and the whole scene just screams higher production value. Okay, this next one is a total mind better. A person is skiing on top of the clouds. The normal generation on the left 
is frankly a bit of a mess. The character is phasing in and out of the clouds, the movement doesn't really feel like skiing, and the whole scene just lacks any kind of physical logic. Now look at the right. The action is perfectly clear. The person is actually skiing on the clouds. You can see the ground far, far below, and the physics of the movement are way more believable. Finally, let's look at these colorful animated game characters. The quality gap here is just massive. The generation on the left is good, but the one on the right is vibrant, sharp, and absolutely popping with detail. It's a night and day difference, and once again, it was cranked out in about four minutes compared to the original's 28. So, what is this black magic? How does it actually work? Now, get this straight, DC VideoGen isn't a new AI model. It's more like a supercharger, a post-training framework that makes the models we already have way more efficient. It all comes down to two big brain innovations. The first is a new Deep Compression Video Autoencoder, or DCAEV. All you need to know is that this thing is a master at taking raw video and squishing it into a tiny, much more manageable version of itself in the latent space. We're talking insane compression ratios, like 32 to 64 times smaller. The secret to how it does this without turning your video into a pixelated mess is a super clever technique called chunk causal temporal modeling. It breaks the video into small bite-sized chunks. Within each chunk, the AI can look both forwards and backwards in time to capture every last detail and reconstruct the frames perfectly. But when it moves from one chunk to the next, it only looks at the past chunks. This hybrid approach gives it the best of both worlds, the insane quality of a non-causal system and the power to generate long videos without weird artifacts. The second piece of the puzzle is called AE Adapt V, which is basically the strategy for teaching a massive pre-trained video model how to use this new super compressed format. You can't just swap the autoencoder and hope for the best. Instead, NVIDIA developed a two-stage process. First, they freeze the brain of the original model and only train its input and output layers. The goal is to teach these layers how to translate the new compressed data into a language the original brain already understands. This is genius because it preserves all the knowledge of that massive pre-trained model. After that's done, they do a final lightweight tune-up using LoRa to polish the results. This whole process is ridiculously efficient. We're talking 230 times less compute than it took to train the original model from scratch. The headline number you need to remember is that this tech can make existing models up to 14.8 times faster. NVIDIA also says it allows for up to 4K video generation on a single H100 GPU. The benchmarks confirm this isn't just about speed, it's also about making the final product look way better. My take is this is a massive development. It's not another foundation model, but an enabling technology that could make high quality video generation way more accessible and practical. A nearly 15x speed up without a loss in quality is a huge leap. The code is still in legal review, but NVIDIA says it will be released with a permissive Apache 2.0 license, which is awesome news for everyone. When this drops, it could be a component that gets baked into all the open source video tools we already love. I'll drop the links to their project page in the description for you to dig in. All right, let's switch gears. Remember that crazy video super resolution tool, Diff VSR, that we geeked out about a few months back? Well, the wait is over. The developers have finally released the code so we can stop dreaming and start doing. Let's just revisit how insane the results are. Here's an underwater scene with a sea turtle. The before shot is a blurry low res mess. The after shot, bam. The model doesn't just upscale it, it intelligently adds back texture to the turtle's skin and shell and brings a whole new level of clarity to the water. This tiger comparison is the perfect test. The original is covered in digital noise, completely hiding the fur texture. In the after version, the noise is gone and it's been replaced with convincing detail. You can actually see the individual hairs and the sharp stripes. We see the same magic on this clip of a person. The before has that grainy, low-light noise you see in old videos. Diff VSR cleans it up beautifully, but avoids that waxy, artificial skin look. The result is a much clearer, more natural-looking image. And it even works on something as complex as a pizza. Before, it's a noisy, muddled mess. 
after, the image is clean and the textures of the cheese, pepperoni, and crust are all sharp and distinct. It just looks so much better. As the name suggests, this is a diffusion-based tool. Instead of just guessing, it's using a generative AI to basically dream up the missing high-frequency details. It's been trained to take a high-res video and add noise, and then reverse the process. By learning that reversal, it can take your low-res video and generate plausible details that stay consistent across the entire clip. The code is up on their GitHub now, but here's the reality check. There's no official VRAM spec, but looking at the file sizes, the main model is nearly 15 gigs. You're almost certainly going to need a GPU with at least 24 gigabytes of VRAM to run this beast. This is a pro-level tool that needs pro-level hardware. If you've got the rig for it, links are in the description. And for the grand finale, Figure AI just officially pulled the curtain back on its third-gen humanoid robot, Figure 03. And this one is engineered from the ground up for mass production. The whole game here is to make humanoid robots a scalable product you can actually buy. The bot stands at a very human-like 5'6", weighs 132 pounds, and is covered in this soft, washable skin. But the real upgrades are under the hood. It's got a new battery system that gives it five hours of nonstop work. And get this, it uses wireless inductive charging coils in its feet. It literally just has to step onto a charging pad to juice up at two kilowatts. The cameras have doubled the frame rate and a quarter of the latency, and its hands have new tactile sensors, so sensitive they can feel a force as light as a paperclip. But the hardware is only half the story. The brain of this operation is Figure AI's own AI system called Helix. This is a vision language action neural net, which is a fancy way to say the robot can process what it sees, understand commands in plain English, and then translate that into precise actions without needing to be pre-programmed for every little task. This is the key to letting it work in the real world. Hello. Hello, Andrea. Here is your key. You'll be in room 23. The elevators are past the door on the right. Enjoy your stay. But what really sets Figure 03 apart is the manufacturing. They've ditched expensive methods and are using high volume techniques like die casting and injection molding, which they say has cut component costs by 90%. They've built a factory in San Jose that can already pump out 12,000 robots a year, and their plan is to use their own robots to help build more robots a strategy they're calling the flywheel effect. This is a direct shot at competitors like Tesla's Optimus. While Tesla's talking a big game, Figure is pointing to its production-ready factory and its existing partnership with BMW, where its older robots are already working. With over a billion dollars in funding from giants like OpenAI, NVIDIA, and Microsoft, Figure is making a very serious play to be the first company to truly mass-produce a general-purpose humanoid robot. So. That's where we're at this week. The pace is just relentless, and I want to know what you all think is the biggest trend right now. Leave your take in the comments below. As always, all the resources and links are in the description. Thanks for your time.